In the post linked to in the video description, as well as in this video, the percentage of brightness refers to the amount from 1 to 100 in the monitor's menu, and the CDM squared value is the total brightness of white measured with a SpectraCal C6 HDR2000 colorometer, which is essentially a fancier X-Rite i1 Display Pro. Photos are all taken with a Nikon D5200 camera and the ceiling light used with the photos is a single 2600 lumen daylight or 6500K Philips CFL light. Such excellence. My, my. There is a right and wrong way to view or use each type of LCD panel due to their differently limiting viewing angles. The most important step to optimally viewing each LCD panel type is figuring out the right height for each. Second is the viewing distance, which varies per panel type and between the same types of panels depending on their quality. Son of your misborn clogged mutant. Many people who upgrade from TM panels place their new AHVA IPS or PLS panel at the same height and distance. TN panels must be viewed like in this image to get the best image quality out of them, which is viewed from above or while looking down at them. TN panels have the most restrictive viewing angles, both horizontally and vertically, but they do fare better when looked down upon or viewed from above than AHVA, IPS, and PLS panels do. TN panels cannot be viewed while leaning back or viewed from below without darkening significantly, which makes them unusable for leaning back, reclining, or when viewed when placed higher than the viewer's eyes. Even slight vertical changes result in obvious darkening on TN panels. The top left image shows the correct way to view an AHVA IPS or PLS panel, and is also ideal for keeping proper posture and not hunching. The top of AHVA IPS and PLS panels needs to line up or be higher than the viewer's eyes to eliminate glow. A high amount of AHVA IPS and PLS horror stories about glow and light bleed are the result of improper use, such as keeping the brightness maxed while looking down at or viewing the AHVA, IPS, or PLS panel from above. The photo is taken while looking down at or viewing the monitor from above, which is correct for TN panels, but incorrect for AHVA, IPS, and PLS panels. AHVA, IPS, and PLS panels cannot be viewed from above or while being looked down upon without suffering from obvious contrast loss or white glow or vibrancy loss. Despite this, AHVA, IPS, and PLS panels still have the widest viewing angles, as well as the most accurate, even, and vibrant colors. Keep that crack your skull open. On the left is a TN panel raised and viewed incorrectly, with 54% brightness, which measures to 140 CDM squared, which is the same as on the right, but the right is of a TN panel lowered and looked down upon or viewed from above and viewed correctly. In this image, on the left is a TN panel at 90 degrees, while on the right is a TN panel tilted down slightly, with the brightness set to 54% in the menu, which measures out to 140 CDM squared. Notice how obviously more dark the left monitor is. Out of the way! I'm watching you. Out of the way! I'm watching you. In this comparison, the ViewSonic on the left is viewed incorrectly which is lowered or viewed from above or looked down upon, with the brightness set to 100%, while it is raised on the right, but the brightness is still set to 100%. Raising the monitor vastly decreases the white glow across the bottom, especially in the bottom right corner, but the scene still looks quite washed out since the brightness is maxed. Very bright room lighting would negate this, but many people use their displays in the dark with the brightness cranked, like they did with their previous TN panel, and complain about their display looking dull or washed out and suffering from obvious backlight bleeding glow. Huh? What the fuck? Mutant. Here is the ViewSonic again on the left when viewed from above or while being looked down upon with 100% brightness, while on the right, 
make the Sonic is set to 33% brightness and raised. 33% menu brightness on my unit when calibrated outputs 140 CDM squared brightness when measuring white which is significantly dimmer, but still not recommended for lightless room or dark room use. Raising the monitor and lowering the brightness to 140 CDM squared, or from 100% in the menu to 33, results in vastly reduced glow, versus the monitor when lowered or viewed from above or while looking down, like it is on the left, and how one must view a TN panel. The lower brightness also results in an image far closer to the source, though as previously stated, 140 CDM squared Brightness is still far too bright for lightless or dark room use. On the left again is the ViewSonic when viewed incorrectly, from above or while looking down at it with 33% brightness, while on the right the monitor is raised with 33% brightness, still. Notice the reduced glow, especially in the bottom right corner. The glow reduction is not nearly as obvious as with the 100% brightness comparisons when the monitor is raised versus lowered and looked down upon, but it still makes a very noticeable difference. And I say, it's easy to play the hero, die a foolish death, but someone must survive, preserve our body of knowledge for future generations. VA panels, such as AMVA and SPVA panels, have the second most restrictive horizontal viewing angles, but suffer from far less contrast loss and glow than AHVA IPS and PLS panels when looked down upon or viewed from above. 